What's up guys, YouTube world, hello. Let me pull up a stool here. Today I wanna to talk to you about brave design ideas because the honest truth about Airbnb is that there's a top few percent of hosts that get all of the very first bookings that come to the calendars in their area and then after their calendars fill up, everybody else gets the business. You wanna be one of those hosts that gets booked first. So you get the prices you want, you get the guests that you want, you know, you get the good guests that plan ahead and book way in advance. Now you can do this with design because design is what drives your photos. You can take great photos, but if you don't have like great inspired or competitive design, you're just not going to have photos that pop, right? So, and fun fact, and this is what I'm going to teach you in this video, is that on a budget still, you can come up with design ideas that punch through like all the white noise on Airbnb because everybody's doing the same stuff and you can do some different stuff. So I'm gonna give you about four solid design approaches in this video, so that way, as you do your competitor research, which I tell you guys to do all the time, you can find out what your competitors are doing and then design something differently. And that way, you'll contrast your environment, push to the front of the pack, and get some bookings. Let me teach you how. Welcome back, Airbnb family. So thank you so much for tuning in to another video. I would love for you to hit that like button. I would appreciate that. So I don't wanna waste your time, let's jump right in. This is my bedroom. Um, and I wanna give you a small backstory as to why this room is black. Every time I move into a space, I like to test new ideas for furnishings and stuff like that. And as you guys see, I'm starting to paint all my own paintings and stuff. I mean, this has been one of our main competitive advantages in Philadelphia is we have places with really high ceilings and then gigantic paintings, stuff that you cannot buy. And thus, no one else can do it. My whole approach to design lately is not to spend more money, but to spend differently. And to paint walls black um, is something that people usually aren't brave enough to do. Ex unless like you own a luxury property, then you're like, I don't care if I paint the walls black because we'll just paint them again. A lot of people are afraid to negotiate with their landlord to get permission to change the wall color. And if you sign long enough leases, like three year long leases, and you sign multiple doors at a property, trust me, they'll say yes. So. Under the caveat that you can change wall color, this is gonna be my very first tip to you. Um, and this is not one of the four design approaches. What I'm about to give you is actually a few design tips that are universal, and then we'll talk about four design approaches. So some universal tips is paint at least an accent wall. It gives the place personality. Let's show you a photo of my living room. Painted a green accent wall there. Um, my whole entire bedroom is black, and I think it's way cool. It photographs well, um, and it just has a different type of look than any other bedroom that I've seen on Airbnb here in Dallas. If I put this on Airbnb, I'm sure it would get bookings. Now, one of the most popular colors for accent walls in Philadelphia is this strange, mostly orange, but kind of a tint of yellow color in these studios. And what leads me to my second tip for you, beyond just accent walls, you can do stencils or stripes. Um, here's a picture of a wall that I did where I put a white on white stencil above the headboard. See, we bought cheap furniture and that's okay, but then we made that cheap furniture look a little less cheap with the way that we put it together and designed it and that little white on white like stencil on the back, I think is this really subtle, like almost Martha Stewart style um, effect. In one of those orange yellow rooms, we put a honeycomb stencil and that was really hard to do. I was actually very bad at putting that up. So it looks a little grungy, but it actually still came out good enough. In this other room, I use this vertical red stripe and I actually put like love notes inside the space. There's multiple sentences that are like romantic sentences hidden throughout the home on the red stripes. But this whole white, red, gray allowed us to make that space for less than $4,000. The whole space is done for under four grand and it's getting lots of bookings. And then this leads me to beyond the paint. So you are going to choose a color scheme in general, furniture included, um, that should contrast your competition. Um, if everybody's using blues, use some orange because it's the opposite. If everybody's using like grays and, um, you know, say, the, the, or the brown and blue, right? The brown and blue look, definitely use orange. If people are using like different shades of gray and corporate stuff, start using pastels. If other people are using pastels, then start using neon. You know what I'm saying? Like look for different approaches that people aren't touching. So that way, what you're looking for is you're looking to break someone's pattern when they're going through your photos. So choosing just a, a core color palette that contrasts everybody else's photos as people go through like map view and they scroll down and they're looking at everybody's hero photos, you want yours to be the one that kind of pops out of the pack. And so you can do this with color scheme. Now, 
Those I think are the basics. You also want to fill up your walls. You don't want a lot of blank wall space. So smaller spaces are easier to furnish because it's easier to fill up the space for less money. In my opinion, that's why studios are great because the difference in cost between a studio and a one bedroom as far as design goes is about a thousand dollars to start just because there's that wall separating the bedroom. So consider that. In a future video, I'm gonna give you all the products like the amenities products that outside of design, things that you should incorporate into your space um, like for example, something we're adding now is a full length mirror. Um, we're putting them in all of our units. It's a thing, people want them. So that's like one example of a product you should always buy now. So now let's get to these four design approaches. One of the most popular approaches um, that you'll see most people do is like rustic or farmhouse. Um, the reason why is the stuff can look a little worn down and it survives longer looking a little bit aged. That's kind of part of the charm of the look. A lot of manufacturers make this wood and metal kind of furniture so it's easily accessible. And browns are, are very natural to us and it's really easy to incorporate different design styles around brown. A lot of the cheap decor that you can buy, like say Marshall's Home Goods or At Home or Ross Dress for Less or all these places, um, they really push to design around the rustic look. So um, obviously there's some photos, examples of rustic properties. Um, rustic and farmhouse can contrast in some cases, but um, I think that this is one that you're gonna find a lot. So the only time that I would use rustic or farmhouse is when it's truly authentic, or for some reason, let's say you're in Boston and everybody's got a completely different theme, right? They do a brownstone kind of thing. They don't do a, a farmhouse thing. You might be able to pull it off. Um, it's part of your charm, make it happen. So that's just a gimme. That's not one that I recommend. And now one that we're starting to push into is boho. Boho is fun. Um, so it's bohemian chic is really what we've been pushing, which is you use mid-century furniture, like the I Love Lucy stuff, um, the first couple episodes of WandaVision kind of era furniture, and then you add this bohemian, like almost Tulum style, like um, world traveler, like kind of earthy um, overlay to it. And it's a cool, it's a cool little juxtaposition, you could call it, because what you've got is this like pushing towards modern America, and then you've, you're just kind of actually taking it back and throwing it back into earth with like these woven, with these like woven tapestries and just different stuff like that, and geometrical shape, um, geometrical shape artwork and stuff. Now you also have contemporary. The cool thing about contemporary is contemporary can also be minimalist. Um, I think this is one of my favorite ways to do design. Um, really, you should. Pick a few pieces that will carry the whole design. That's really what contemporary minimalism is all about. Um, one lesson that I learned from a designer, she said that the sofa makes the space. So if you're ever looking um, to start your design, whether it's rustic, boho, chic, contemporary, or future designs that we'll talk about, um, you really should start with the sofa all around. You, you, of course, the color scheme and then the sofa. Now, pro tip, um, I like sofa mania. I don't like Wayfair because their shipping sucks and they always like delay the big items. I like I have a table that I ordered that never showed up. It's months later. Um, a lot of stuff that they send me is weeks late. And when we set up a property, you don't want to be waiting an extra week on furniture because that costs you money. So I use Amazon and then I use uh, Sofa Mania. Those are my two favorite places to get sofas. Also, Overstock has been a place where if I'm going to get like a more like luxury couch, but I'm trying to get a deal, Overstock does me well. And so. Um, some photos of some modern contemporary, and technically this bedroom could be that modern contemporary. Now, I did something a little wild. Um, I went with chrome and concrete. It was what I wanted to call it. So I'm looking for reflective silver and then concrete accents. And I'm using very cold LED lights, square shapes, as you can tell with those LED lights back there. Then I mix that with like an Asian flare with the bonsai trees in the back, which you might be able to see. It's a little dark, so let me show you some photos. I personally think that this this chrome cold like goes really well with the concrete and the bonsai, personally. I like it. And then of course on this black background, it pops. And it gave me an excuse to put up this photo that I took um, in Mexico. So that's my bedroom design is I think that this is a, like a modern contemporary. And the cool thing about this is you can go onto Pinterest and you can look through photo ideas. And this is one of the greatest ways to get inspiration for things like this. If you type in uh, minimalist design, contemporary design, contemporary minimalist, um, dark room designs, um, black and green design. You're gonna find some stuff that really, really rocks, and so that's what I recommend you do there. Now, the fourth design I'm gonna give you is actually kind of a pick your poison. It's gonna be themed properties. 
You wanna jam and you wanna be competitive, I really think you should push towards themed properties. One of my students in Canada did a steampunk theme. Um, we did a unicorn theme, which I thought really rocked. Some of the most popular ones that you'll see in the area are Super Mario themed or Back to the Future themed. There's two like super popular properties here. And the reason why I'm gonna tell you this is it's not just about Airbnb anymore. There's actually a place called Peerspace and we don't have a marketing agreement or anything, but I think they're awesome. Um, and it's a new thing. Uh, instead of renting by the day, people rent by the hour. And if you have a themed property that could do well in photo shoots, then you have the opportunity to, um, to rent it by the hour because it's also like doable for photography, not just for living in. And so themed properties, you can actually kind of double dip. Now, with theme properties, you have to fully commit to the theme. It's almost like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It has to be full immersion into your imagination. So really think it out. If you wanna do a Marvel theme, those have been popular. Um, also any sports team, local sports team, Dallas Cowboys here, I'm not a fan of sports actually, so you can, I guess you can cancel me right now, I don't watch sports. But you can, any, any local sports team, you can actually pick if, it, if it's going to drive traffic to your property because a bunch of baseball fans or football fans are coming there, then a full on theme like that is cool. Um, in Houston, you could do a NASA theme or an oil theme, like these things can happen. In places that have um, airport hubs, you can do like an aeronautical theme, but don't do like a cliche, cliche aeronautical theme. You can do like a, like a super cerebral, like engineer theme where you're putting like, like, like posters of like old Ro like Rolls Royce, um, jet engines, like some of the, the earliest airplane engines ever made. Like, and that would be cool stuff that like pilots, if a pilot was going to book your place, they would want to see, they would want to see some cool shit. They wouldn't want to see like cliche stuff. And there's a person I believe in Nashville who's done this kind of like super involved, like you have to be smart to get the design engineering theme for airplanes and it's really tight. So themed properties are going to be um, a good one for you as well. But the moral of the story here guys is um, you have to pick something that other people are not doing and then you have to do it well enough for the photos to look good. You can't just pick something different and then do a trash job or take trash photos. You can't have any gaps in your game if you want to become some of the like the upper percentile of the Airbnb world. And as a gift to you, I'm going to put a link down below. Um, actually, I might even have to put multiple links, but I am going to go shopping for you. Everything that I did for like this room, for example, I will create um, a, a list of just everything that you can buy to instantly create a design. If you want to do like a modern contemporary with a black wall, if you want to do a rustic look, if you want to do um, the boho look, I'll get you guys some links down below so you can just click and have it. Um, I do advise that you always take a look at any, any shopping list that I give you is just going to be like the base colors for your palette. Every room is different in size, different in height. Um, you've got a different layout and the, the bedrooms have a different relationship to the living room, right? Where the door is to get to the bedroom is going to be different. Some kitchens are islands that open up. Some kitchens are like actual rooms to themselves. All of these things will affect your final, final design. So I highly encourage you don't just buy everything on a list and think that that's going to be enough um, or that you think it's not going to be too much because there might actually be too much in it if your place is super small. So think on your feet and you guys will have a blast with design. So if you have any questions, as per usual, put them in the comments and I will see you down there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the other side.